Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I'm trying to figure this out. Hold on. Okay, Katie, can you hear me? Katie? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I don't know how to get this to show to the screen. Um, tap the screen and at the bottom where it says start video, there's a red line. Um, you should hit that. Okay, hold on. Bottom of screen, there's a red line. Oh, start video. Okay, there. Thank you. Sorry. There. there we go. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I do have um, my partner uh, going to be joining us at some point. Um, her name is Shelly. Okay. Um, so I was just going to give you that heads up now. Um, but I'm doing well right now. <laughs> well, our, our readers, just for those who are um, going to be seeing this, we on MyrtleBeachSCNews.com and we've been doing a lot of articles about family court. And Katie, you heard of us through one of our articles. Is that not true? And that is true. Yeah. And the woman that we were speaking of was her name was Jan Bromel Holmes. Apparently, you have some um, experience or history with this lady. You mind telling our, our readers about this? I do. Um, well, she. Uh, my children were put into um, into the system because of a situation that happened with their father and his girlfriend. Um, I, at the time, was in college. I was in school when all whatever happened. Um, so I was told that I had to start doing services and uh, drug screens, and then like drug screens where they cut your hair out of your head. Um, wow. Uh, so I was doing that, um, the kid's father, my kid's father, he completed his, uh, treatment plan also. We got the kids home. Um, he ended up going to jail again with the kids in his custody. Uh, so of course, after they came home, you know, and DSS found out that, you know, the father was in jail again, of course they dragged right in. Um, so they were and again and um so we had to do another treatment plan we did um my kid's father uh and i we ended up getting the kids back home again um this is the second time they've you know been in the system and come home um and he again got in trouble um in legal trouble uh and this time he uh, was able to give temporary custody to his sister and her husband. And um, so the uh, children were moved to North Carolina um, and a dispute happened between my kid's father and the brother-in-law. And he, the brother-in-law was angry obviously so he loaded my kids up and he brought them back to the dss office rather than to me as seeing i had much i had rights to my children i had custody um so he dropped them off there and instead of them calling me and saying hi you know we have your children here do you want to come get them or are we keeping them?" you know they gave me no choice, told me there was nothing I could do. Um, I appealed it three times, got denied three times. Um, my two of my children were, you know, my rights were terminated. Um, I was young and I had no idea what to do. You, what do you do? No one tells you, you don't huh. learn this in school. Um, so recently, um, I- either. Were your children adopted out? Were they actually put up for adoption? Yep. Well, how'd that make you feel? There's no words to describe how it makes you feel. I mean, I can tell you right now, like I've got their pictures still on my wall. Like, 
Wow. I've got to, you know, it's, think of them every day. It's hard. And, you know, I have savings accounts for them. I'm, I'm still preparing to see them again. Um, I've missed the most important parts of their life. And I've spent many days and many nights crying about it. Um, if I weren't on here talking, I probably would be crying right now too. Um, How old are your children now? <laughs> my daughter will be 13 in September and my son will be 12, 11, actually 11 in January. And they're both in foster care right now or are they permanently adopted out? They are permanently adopted out. Um, yeah, they were legally kidnapped. <clears throat> I don't feel the state had any right to keep custody of my children knowing I had custody um, and that my children could have easily been handed over to me as seeing the court gave my custody back to me. Um, the only thing that, uh, oh, so recently I had sold my house in uh, North Myrtle Beach and um, when I got back here, I live in Massachusetts now. So when I got back up here, I was, you know, obviously going through all my stuff, you know, going to throw away the junk. You know, I found their baby books, their blankets, a few of their clothes, every, you know, some stuff I saved. Um, and I happened to come across this. Wow. And I started reading it. And everything that they put in here is complete bullshit. Um, and now that it's too late, and now that I, I see what has been handed to a judge, um, I look like an awful person. I wouldn't give my children back to me if, if this were true. Um, like they, they're saying, I don't know when I, if I came to visits that I missed visits and that if I came, I didn't bring um any toys or food or clothes um that i didn't provide for them monetarily like paying child support oh bullshit i have the pictures to prove i still have all their pictures um i showed up to every visitation i always brought them clothes and food um toys lots of toys clothes and food like <laughs> if it were their birthday they had all their birthday presents you know cakes they had their birthday parties like I, I even called the courthouse and I had them give me a printout of my child support receipts. And looking at this, I didn't pay child support. I didn't provide anything for my children. I maybe showed up. Um, <clears throat> I'm a drug addict. Um, the only thing I've ever failed a drug screen for was marijuana. And but they painted you, DSS painted you out to be a drug addict. And you were not in active use when your child, children were taken. You went I was pregnant. You were pregnant when your children were taken. I was uh, seven months pregnant. Wow. When I, and I went to where I was told my children were at my kid's father. Um, he moved around quite a bit. You know, my children were with me and my kid's father's never done anything or given me a reason to feel like my children were in harm with him. You know, so this is the first incident that ever happened. Um, and I would have never expected it from him, honestly, not with his children. <laughs> um, but what was my point? I've got so many different- We were talking about the fact that DSS recommended your children be removed from your home. Right. So you weren't acting out substance. You were not in any type of addiction issue at, at the time. Nope. And they um, they <coughs> had me doing uh, like shoreline drug screens. They had me doing drug therapy, like making me guilty and taking all these services that were unnecessary for one, because I don't have a drug problem. I've never had a drug problem. I'm, I'm happy and fortunate to say that. And unfortunately people do. However, I do not have a drug problem. Um, I've smoked marijuana. I was a teenager. Hi, you know, who hasn't, especially in Myrtle Beach. It's just whatever, you know, right. that's 
I've never done anything in my entire life up to this day that rectifies me not having my children. Right. Never have I ever deserved that. I've done nothing but love my children. I've always provided for them. My children had everything they've ever wanted and needed. They had a safe, secure home. They have a big, loving family. Like, they, there was absolutely no reason. And now I see this file that's full of lies. And I can't do anything. My children are gone. Well, the best I can drive by their house and hope to see them outside playing. But I can't stop and say hi. I can't hug them. They don't. You... What was your court experience like? When you actually went into the courtroom, what was that like? I was already guilty. I, they already had their decisions made. They shook their hands. They, you know, whatever. They passed their plate around. It was already done. Right. Um, it was predetermined before you ever entered the courtroom. Absolutely. And that's if I got to enter the courtroom. They've had several court dates um, that I was not invited to, that I was unaware of. Um, that if I did show up for, I was left having to wait outside. I couldn't go in the courtroom. Oh. Um, my lawyer would go in. Um, my lawyer would go in and they would all do their little bidding on whatever. And that was that. So you believe you really never got a fair hearing in court? A fair, a fair hearing? Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody in family court? No. Nah. No. So, so, Katie, you were basically set up by DSS. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just, my mind is, I still just can't wrap my head around everything that was said in here. <sighs> um, Do you currently have family members living in your home, children living in your home with you? I do. I do. I actually have, um, she's almost 10 months old. I have a 10 month old daughter living in the home with me. Um, has there been any issues at all with your 10 month old? No, absolutely perfect, happy, healthy, the cutest little thing you ever did see. So clearly you're not an unfit mother. No. Right. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I've been perfect, but I've never done anything to put my children in harm, to hurt them. They've never had injuries to them. They've my, ne never anything. Um, now, did I make stupid decisions? Yeah, I had stupid boyfriends, low life. Yeah, typical teenage decisions. Um, but we all grow up. That's no excuse. I mean, I always had my father and my mother. I've always had them, you know, as a part of my life, a big part of my life. Um, if my parents felt like they needed to step in, I feel like my parents would have stepped in. And the state has no business um infringing on my right to raise my child and if i if my parents felt you know that my child or children were in harm they absolutely would have stepped in and they didn't wow you know, my children were absolutely not in harm ever mm -hmm. so katie and this is real hard for me too because I, I hear a lot of this do you think that the government has too much power in the lives of, of individual families as it relates to these issues? Absolutely. Um, they have, you would think that the family court would be the most protected and the most justifiable court there is, and there's not. It, it, uh -huh. It's actually the worst. No one is safe in family court, no one. Jeez. And if you give me just one second, I need to um, send this link to my partner again. Sure. Oops. But yeah, they absolutely take total control. Um, they violate our amendments, our rights, everything that this country was founded on. We have parental rights, we have civil rights, we have liberties, amendments. Like, if you can't just go out and take someone's truck, what makes you think you can go and take someone's child? I think you know they're joining us now. There we go. There's uh, supposed to be a due process. So, do you feel like your kid, your children were kidnapped by the state? Hi. Hey, Hi, Shelly. Hi. Excuse me. Shelly, would you, um, 
That's okay. So do I have the, how do I put the camera on? That's what oh, I the bottom of the screen. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. So guys, we're being joined right now by Shelly Vitello. This is a friend, Katie, is that right? Um, we are partners. Okay. If I, well, that we're partners in, a, in an, an endeavor, not like uh, they're partner no. partners. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's different terminology now, so you never well, know. You're I, gonna know. I want to make sure I use the right language as well. I want to be sensitive to what it is. Um, She's in a group that where we formed a group and um, like to help combat everything that's going on. And she's the treasurer in the union that we just formed alongside of it. So, and I'm the vice president of it. Tell our readers about your group. Tell us what you're advocating. Um, basically we're advocating parental rights because once a child is taken and put into the system, the parents have no say in anything. And there are too many laws that incentivize adoption and that makes it so much harder for parents to get their children back because there's so many things that the social workers get for bonuses that the, the foster parents get for bonuses it's under the adoption and safe families act of 97 and that was put into place by clinton and um we fight basically to prevent children that are being taken away for no reason without warrants you know unlawfully we, we fight to protect those kids and basically keep parents rights intact because once the kids are removed they basically literally have none we can't know if our kids are okay i fought with a mother for a year to find out if her child was even alive still so it's been pretty horrific and the union that we're forming it it's going to help protect those rights by getting people different things that they need, like lawyers or, um, you know, uh, medical care, housing if they need it, things like that. So Katie's the treasurer of that. So she's done an excellent job. She's, she's done so much work on this, putting, she's put together a whole application if anyone wants to help be an officer in their state and things like that. Um, Thank you. You, you basically, um, Shelly, you went through this so fast. I want to make sure that our readers hear this. What you Sorry, said was, it's okay, I like it. What you said <laughs> was that the adoption, people get paid in the court system for adoptions, that the um, families get paid for adoptions. Is that true? Say that one more time for me. So the Adoption and Safe Families Act of 1997, it um, states that the the each agency each um state basically they have to oh, i'm sorry <laughs> they have to adopt out a certain amount of children each year and if they don't adopt out that quota then they will not get their federal funding and it has to be the year prior has to be less than the year that it is so you have to get more kids adopted out and it has to be a certain amount of kids that so has to exceed the amount prior to last year and then if they don't reach the quota, it really doesn't even matter because the secretary of state or the attorney general can go in. It's one of the two, I can't remember, can go in and, and say, all right, we're going to take this case and make it an adoption. So then we reach that quota. So it's okay. like, what? I mean, it, it's right in the, the, like I found it on mass.gov because I'm in Massachusetts. So if you go on mass.gov, it's right up in there. It's, it's the Adoption and Safe Families Act of 97. And the foster families and the guardians, they get money too. They, they get certain amount of stipends, you know, each month they get, I think it's like, um, I, th I think it was 700 a month or something, but I, I would have to recheck that. I don't know if that's from a couple of years ago or not, but um, I know that they get less money when a DCF gets less money when they give kids back. So, so when they return children, they actually lose money. And for each kid in, in the system, 25 providers get their livelihood from that child. So you take one child away, 25 providers are losing business, losing money. And it's, it's literal. It's not just like, this is a, a thought or this could happen or a conspiracy that it's one of our laws. <laughs> it's like, how is this even a thing and, and the 1522 rule goes with it and that's a law that states if your child is in custody for 15 months out of 22 months then you get a termination of your parental rights regardless of how you're doing regardless of the situation so they terminate rights oh go ahead katie sorry i couldn't hear oh i said and it's their fault for the lengthy time and i'm trying right. to that from the government and then they're also requiring child support on top of the getting 
Right. They don't do child support in Massachusetts, but I've seen ladies that are, I, I had a woman who was stuck with $385,000 in child support. And she was told if she did not pay it, she would not get her child back. That's literally extortion. Like, mm -hmm. How is that? Yeah. <laughs> is this, um, and, and Shelly, I'm going to ask you, because we've already asked Katie, I'm going to ask you as well. Does this amount to state sponsored kidnapping? Honestly? Yes. Yes. 100%. I have, we literally, have every single day we see it right it's horrible and then they find the kids that were actually trafficked through there was a lot of kids that were trafficked through sexual um you know exploitation things like that um there was something on the fbi's website that i was reading their statistics and they said that out of all of the raids that they do that involve foster kids 60 percent of or that involve i'm sorry children 60 percent of their raids that their foster kids who have been trafficked through sexual slavery type situations it's it's really it's mind-blowing at the same time it's really hard to do my job because of the things that i have to encounter and i'm sure same for katie because she does the same stuff i do and we have to look at this constantly we have to constantly be in a state of of like heightened anxiety because we have to constantly look at what these kids are going through and and if we turn a blind eye then that's just going to be another person that just says it's not my problem i'm not going to deal with it i don't have dcf in my life but i did and because of what they did yes i'm risking them retaliating but at this point if i keep this going and i don't do anything my kids are going to be going through the same thing because they're on the same list i am when oh, you lose a child right. you get put on the abuse registry no matter what yeah. you get put on this national abuse registry and then your kids are listed like as your kids and then they can go in and look at stuff and say oh she's got kids oh let's see if they're in the same cycle they it's like a giant cycle it keeps um, coming down you yeah. become prey and the state becomes a predator right more or less. right wow yeah. our children are not ours when they're born when we are born when our children are born we and our children belong to the government and it's up to them if it's okay or if they have enough money in their pocket to allow us to raise our children right and i keep seeing cases over and over well these foster parents have more money than you so your child would be better off just sign your rights away you're giving them a better life blah, blah. My son when was money a foster. you're what my son was abused in foster care right i would go to visitations weekly and see my son with scratches and bruises all up and down his arms, his yeah. eyes with bags under him, him just crying to please come home to his mommy because he slept with me every single night of his life until that day. Right. And they had him in the first place. And then uh, we went to court and there was no evidence. Everything was dismissed and they still kept my child. Right. And they, they charged me for tra or they charged charged me for kidnapping my own child yep i had they did that to another girl in our group too and she literally didn't even know they had custody of her kid and they said right. that she kidnapped yeah. the child and yeah. when they came and they tried to take this child the one that's looking into the camera i you oh, know i just child beautiful this is freya <laughs> she's so adorable I just, Love. you know, I showed them everything. I, I said, look, I'm in school to be a lawyer. Here's all my stuff. I just took, I think, my eighth hair follicle yesterday for my eldest daughter because she's supposed to be coming home in April, but like starting with visitation. But I've been prevented from seeing her for seven years by my own father. Like my case started when I was taken from my father for abuse and the same judge who took me from my father two years later took my daughter from me based on an allegation from my <gasps> father and then gave her to my father as he was dating the DCF worker out of Hyannis, Massachusetts. And that's all on record. <laughs> so and there's wow. still the it's so how yeah. do we get our Shelly, how do we get our rights back? Because I hear this well, over and over. How do we get our rights back? We have to pass a lot of different laws. We have to do a lot of different we have to yes, raise awareness, but at this point I really don't see the people stepping up to the degree that we need them to. And I feel like it would turn violent. That's not what we want. And mm -hmm. we want to, we just want to expose what's happening. Like, you know, you're fighting for all these different rights, but you're not fighting for your children. They're, the kids are being taken as well. The kids are being exploited and people are trusting their government so much. And they're, in, they're so paralyzed with fear that when DCF sh or CPS shows up at your house, they just do whatever they tell them. But the best thing to do is to close the door and not let them in because without an investigation, they can't take your kids. So it, it's, it's a bittersweet, you know, thing. We, we help kids prevent, we pre help prevent them, I'm sorry, from being taken. And, and yes, that's great. But at the same time, we know that 
they're going to come back around and they're going to keep trying to take those kids. So then we have to be diligent about protecting them. So our rights, we have to put a lot of different things in the legislature. And that that's why I'm in school. The so union ready to go. <laughs> yeah, like we exactly she's been writing a lot of different legislature and the union that we're starting will will at least be able to pay for the stuff that we need to pay for in order to get things into legislation. And that way we can actually fight things because the elected officials, they're not helping. They're not doing their jobs. They're putting they're in these taking their money. Right. Like they're putting in stupid things like save the whales, which is great. Yes, I love whales. Let's save all of them. But can we save our kids first? Like it's just absolutely it blows my mind. It really does. The fact Oops. that we even have to discuss this is disgusting. It's stomach right. turning. You should see the things that happen to these children like Yep. I'm fortunate that it, <sighs> awful. Like I got stuck in a basement with Kool-Aid and ramen noodles. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, what, so, what, let me, let me ask you this for parents who find themselves trapped in the system, who've lost their kids by, by the state or are losing or in the process of possibly losing their kids. Is this an expensive proposition? To try to fight the government? You have no money or you have no voice and you still might not even win. Right. Like I tell most people, go pro se if you don't have an attorney, you know, do all your own research because the attorneys just want to, you know, if they're, if they're court appointed, they just want to get it out, out of their way, so to speak, because it puts them in an awkward position. And if they speak up for the parents, they lose their, you know, credentials with the judge. And that's what I keep running into is, is, you know, I don't want to lose my good faith with the, my good standing, good faith, whatever with the judge. And then they won't speak up. So then I have all these parents, like, what do I do? Finally, we just started researching all of our own laws and we started doing everything pro se. Personally, I have an attorney, but at the same time, it's like, what, <clears throat> well, that's, that's where I'm at with this. Well, what is, what, what are they doing that I can't do basically? Right. And I can ask, my child better yes there's an emotional tie so i'm going to be more emotionally whatever but at that point it's like why why even wait i mean i waited all this time because they kept telling me just be patient this will happen just be patient and we'll do that and i i listened to them i let them tell me that and then when i did what they told me i went back to court for my other child and they said oh well you know you waited too long well you told me to i took your advice so it's a catch 22 so we have to do something like drastic which is why we came up with the union because not many of the parents have the money to do any of this so we came up with the union now if people actually contribute and get on the ball and do what they have to do then it'll be great it'll work out we'll actually be able to fight fire with fire the right way but if not and they don't take this seriously then they're just going to be a bunch of kids taken away again and last year in massachusetts at least they spent I, I, it was about 10 million dollars more trying to take families apart but they took less ki less kids away. So I don't know if that was because of COVID or because people are learning their rights, but it says that something's changing, but that also means there's gonna be a big influx of people getting taken away pretty soon, I feel like. So it's very nerve wracking. Well, guys, thank you for doing this with us. This is invaluable to us. Is there anything you'd like to tell our viewers before we end this session? Just to make sure you know your rights, learn every law, case law, family court law, probate law. It's very time consuming. Go to your local law, law library. But if they get involved, the first people you should call are people like us. Call, you know, one of the organizations that does this stuff. Ours is Families Against Legal Kidnapping. We're out of Massachusetts, but we help families all over the place. So if they show up, we'll talk you through it. We'll stay on the phone with you. We'll make sure you don't talk too much. We'll make sure, you know, as long as it's a real case where you're not abusing or harming a child. You know, right. So you know, we'll talk you through that. And your, your group is called Families Against Legal Kidnapping, correct? Yes. Um, I have um, a Gmail account for it. Um, myself, I do you? I haven't corresponded with you on no. one. Do you have a, you have a tell us your Gmail account right now because we want to get everyone that needs this help, this help. It's um, F-A-L-K National Treasurer at gmail.com that's f-a-l-k national treasure at gmail.com correct yep. okay yep. folks you've heard it right here from shelly and katie this is going on everywhere everywhere 50 <laughs> percent of all marriages in the divorce guys family court is messed up and we've got it and it's this. because of dss they make you separate your families they don't preserve them <laughs> which is their that was statement. Statement. 
Right. That was the last thing I was going to say. The first thing they do, if you have a spouse, they divide and conquer. So do not go against your spouse, even if you want to. Just no. talk to them about it and then, you know, talk about what you're going to talk about with CPS. Because even Dr. Phil says it. You do not want the court system in your family. You don't want it. It's not a good thing. <laughs> not. Thanks, guys. Thank you Thank very you. much for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.